Hey guys, this is John with uh, Forward Talk again. Before we get started into our episode, I would like to remind you to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever we release any new content, any new videos <clears throat> on any new topic. Also, if you have not yet gone over to Patreon and become a member to uh, support the Forward Talk channel on Patreon, please take the opportunity to do that, as well as any one-time donations that you would like to make to Forward Talk, you can uh, do that. <coughs> you can do that as well. There will be links below for you to be able to uh, support on Cash App. And so, uh, for those of you that are supporters on Patreon, for those of you that are subscribed, thank you so very much for supporting the channel. But I'm going to talk about a subject today that I have written about in the past. I've written about it on my blog, uh, Calvinism My Way. And uh, it's I titled that blog, Something That I Wish Apostolics Would Do. And the thing that I wish the apostolics would do is, is debate. Or for the context of this video, I wish that apostolic preachers could have more open dialogue and discussion on issues about which we disagree or sensitive topics that exist within uh, the fellowship or our movement. But it seems to be that there is um, there is a, a re reaction against any kind of open dialogue on topics where we disagree, where there's disagreement within uh, our fellowship or within our movement. And I think that's very unfortunate. And uh, there are a number of reasons why I think that we should. Number one, it can be done respectfully. Uh, however, I think that too often that too many of our egos are wrapped up in um, our pastoral authority, who we are, and we're afraid for saints or church members, especially people that we pastor, to see that we may have been wrong on a topic. And so sometimes I think our egos are too big to do this. But it can be done respectfully. And uh, I think a good example of this is James White and Michael Brown. They have <clears throat> teamed up to debate against Unitarians and others um, uh, in, in dialogue and conversation about areas of theology. But not only have they teamed up together, they have also debated each other on the topic of Calvinism. And while they are very good friends, and they re they have remained friends uh, after their debate, because they are such good friends, they were able to dialogue about a very important topic on which they disagreed and did so charitably as brothers. And I think that oneness Pentecostals, I think Pentecostals ought to be able to do the very same thing. I think it would be helpful and beneficial to the entire body of Christ if we could do that. I think the church needs to see uh, preachers disagree with each other respectfully, and I think the world also needs to see it. Many other denominations and groups and organizations and fellowships are able to do it. And um, the other reason is, is we're disagreeing anyway, but the reason, the ways in which we are disagreeing currently are not being productive. <clears throat> we are disagreeing uh, anyway. We are disagreeing in the pulpit. We are disagreeing behind closed doors. We are disagreeing around dinner tables at conferences. And so it's not as if we're not talking about our disagreements, just the way that we're doing it uh, is, is not healthy. It's not wise. It's not biblical. We're talking about one another behind our backs, behind their backs. We're saying things where they are not there uh, to defend themselves. And oftentimes we are straw manning our brother's position. We're not being fair. We're not presenting what he actually believes in a fair and equitable way. We're misrepresenting what he's saying. And this happens for a number of different reasons. And so when there is open dialogue that happens back and forth, for example, in the medium that I'm using right now, what if there was an exchange of videos between between two Pentecostal preachers where they discussed openly the issues about which they disagreed in a charitable and a kind fashion. This would be a lot more productive than what we are doing 
by preachers getting up at conferences and taking pot shots at other preachers with whom they disagree. For example, in a facial hair message that was preached um, recently at a big conference, the pastor that was blasting facial hair said to all the people that not only were in the building, but all the people that were watching and that would watch the, the, the archive later, I don't care what your leadership says. I don't care if your leadership says it's okay. It's still wrong. And so he, he was actually preaching to other saints under uh, other men's leadership and was telling them that their leader was wrong. Uh, in this case, on the issue of allowing facial hair. Now, what if the situation had been reversed and and there was someone in the pulpit preaching pro-facial hair and looked at all of the members and this gentleman and other men's congregations that was present um, at that meeting and said, I don't care what your leadership says. It's okay for you to have facial hair. Well, that wouldn't have went over very well at all. But instead of taking pot shots at each other from pulpits like that, what if there was an open dialogue? What if there was an open discussion to where we could talk about these issues uh, in a way that was fruitful, in a way that was productive, in a way that was uh, that people could see us disagreeing without uh, without. Uh, many of the casualties that happens in the way that we are doing things now and having these conversations. I guess I'm just making an appeal to uh, to my brothers, to my fellow ministers. Be willing to have the conversation. Be willing to to let what you preach, what you write, what you say be a part of the conversation to move forward on some things that that need to change move forward on some issues that that uh, need to be addressed and it just seems to me as though only one side of the issue is is often allowed to speak and that is you know if you don't agree with me then you're being divisive if you if you respond or call me out on what it is that I'm saying Anything that I say on any of these YouTube channels, I made an appeal in my last book on marriage and divorce uh, for anyone to respond either in written form or respond in a series of videos to what, I, to what I've written on the topic. Uh, it would be a great honor uh, to me if someone would, with, with uh, brotherly love and charity, respond to, um, to anything that, I've, that I have written or produced. And so I think it's important that we can have open, charitable, respectful dialogues without accusing each other of, of being compromisers or not loving truth. And uh, too often the response is, well, it's just not the time now. It's just, it's not, it's just not time. The time is it now. The culture isn't caught up with us. The, the church culture hasn't caught up with us. And if we just let it rest, then if we just let it go, then it, it, it'll just take care of itself. The problem with that is, 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 uh, I think demonstrated very clearly with even the issue of the medium that I'm using right now, which is, which, which is video. I remember the days where preachers were getting up in the pulpits and they were disfellowshipping each other. They were questioning whether someone was their brother, if they had any sort of video whatsoever. Um, we were we were damning and condemning everybody for being compromisers and and not loving God, loving truth uh, if they had any sort of video whatsoever. It was a dividing line, and we blasted people over it from the pulpit and uh, and made huge spectacles about people who used video and how they were not as holy and less holy. Uh, than we are. And then the shift happened and those people that were doing all of the harsh preaching about video has now started using video and not a single apology has been made. No one has gone back and said, hey, I'm sorry, to my knowledge, if it's happened, I'm not aware of it. That has gone back and said, hey, those comments that I made in the, those conferences all those years about video and, and about the preachers who use them, I was wrong. 
I was wrong about what I said. I was wrong in the way that I said it. My spirit was wrong. Would you please forgive me for the comments that I made? And that's that's the way things happen when we just let things go away silently. What about all the people that were hurt in the process? What about all the people that were damaged in the process of, of us shifting our views on a topic like video? Are we going to repeat the same thing about facial hair? Are we going to repeat the same thing about a number of different issues where we are bitterly attacking other people who disagree with us on that topic? And yet, if we do change or shift in the next 10 years or the next 15 years, um, are we going to do it silently to the point to where all the people that, that we called and out and criticized and ridiculed is there still going to never be any kind of apology and the underlying divisiveness of of our of in our movement and in our fellowship is going to remain because we make bold stands reverse our position on the issues and then never say I was wrong and never apologize to the people that we never apologize to the people that we hurt or offended i just think there needs to be a serious shift and how we handle business and how we handle the issues uh, that we are dealing with and facing. There are charitable ways for us to interact with one another as brothers um, because we're disagreeing anyway. We're taking shots anyway. Why not do it in an open fashion to where uh, there can be charitable dialogue and, and conversation on these various different topics? I think our churches, I think the people that follow our ministries um, would respect that so much more than the way that we've been handling business on divisive issues within our movement uh, over the last few uh, decades that I've been uh, able to acknowledge and see how things have been handled. Just an appeal today uh, to, to fellow ministers and to fellow preachers, L let's, let's have the conversation. And let's do it in a kind and respectful and honorable way. I think it'll make a huge difference in how we move the church forward on a number of different issues.